Welcome back to the Game Collection. I am Super Derek, and this is my 12th review. And do you know what that means? That means it's time for me to review my most requested game of all time, Crystalis. That's right, this game has been requested literally a couple of times, so I decided, hey, what the heck, I'll go ahead and move it forward in the release schedule just for you guys. So, without further ado, I am Super Derek, and this is Crystalis. So one of the first things you're probably going to notice about Crystalis right off the bat is that this game is for the Nintendo Entertainment System, making this a review of the oldest game so far on the game collection. It's a good thing I got that $20 Nintendo back in October. To find out how I pulled that off, check out the link at the end of this video. So the backstory of Crystalis is kind of long and doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but here's the abridged version. Dragon is trying to take over a post-apocalyptic vision of our world. You play as a great magician from the past who was put into suspended animation for some reason, and your revival from suspended animation was the last-ditch effort of the four wise sages to oppose Dragon and his forces. Unfortunately, you awaken with a severe case of amnesia and can't even remember your name or any spells. No matter though, because your job is to go out there and collect the four elemental swords created by those four wise sages, in order to combine them into a crystalis, a sword so powerful, they named the game after it. Or at least that's what they named it in the English translation of the game. Probably because God Slayer was just a little too entirely against Nintendo of America's publishing guidelines of the time. Uh, to be more precise, the game was called God Slayer Sonata of the Faraway Sky, which, in my opinion, was actually a more fitting title. Crystalis, at first glance, might look sort of like a Zelda clone, but there are some pretty big differences in the way that the games play. For instance, the game uses experience points and a leveling system similar to what you would find in a Dragon Warrior or Final Fantasy game, but combat is closer to what you would see within The Legend of Zelda. The game also features a magic system for healing, warping, and several other useful skills, as well as a charged magic attack which can be performed by pressing and holding the attack button. And for the record, this sort of mechanic hadn't yet been used in a Zelda title. Crystalis also features several towns which you can travel between, most of which also have item shops and armories where you can buy healing herbs, armors, and shields and you'll need to be sure to buy the latest and greatest models each time they are available, because this game can be merciless. You see, Crystalis is a relic of a bygone era. A time in which when you beat a game it actually meant something. It said something about you and your perseverance, and your skill. Nowadays it seems like game companies are trying to sort of recapture that Nintendo hard feeling. But Chrysalis is the real deal. It actually is a Nintendo game. It speaks pain natively, and it delivers frustration and difficulty just effortlessly. And that's not to overstate the difficulty of the game. It's definitely not as hard as like Contra or uh, Mega Man, but this game is definitely in that same realm of just unforgiving difficulty. Sadly though, some of those frustrations are rooted in poorly programmed collision detection. The hero's hitbox seems to extend beyond his body, and as a result, a lot of the time when you go to take out an enemy with your sword, you usually end up being the one taking the hit. And in an unfair twist, the collision detection boxes on the enemies seem pretty small. Combine that with the fact that you've only got a thrust forward attack, and well, you're better off just using ranged attacks. Another source of frustration within the game stems from an innovation that's actually pretty cool. Throughout the game you acquire four different swords with elemental attributes. Enemies will have corresponding immunities to said four elements. 
This results in needing to switch between swords as you encounter these enemies. And if you're fighting enemies in the same room that are weak to different swords, then that means you'll be switching between them a lot mid-battle. And to make things worse, each sword has a power-up you must also have to equip. This just seems like that sort of thing should be automatic, but it's not. Frustrations aside though, the game controls much like you would expect it to. You even get nifty spells that help you solve puzzles required to advance the game, and figuring out how and when to use them feels rewarding. And so does finally defeating the boss who just kicked your butt 20 times. And when you finally get that higher level attack spell, it feels awesome to feel powerful, even if those moments are short-lived. This game is nearly grind-proof, since your character's maximum level caps out at about 16, so you'll never be able to completely dominate the game with at least some skill. Graphically, Crystalis hasn't really held up well over the course of time, but to be fair, not many NES games have. But when the game came out in 1990, these graphics were relatively good. By today's standards, they're still completely serviceable. I can tell what the enemies are, I can see my character stab his sword, and the spells look impressive. And the environments are dark and dreary. Today it's not going to win any prizes, but the graphics aren't bad enough to make the game unplayable. If there is one thing about this game that has aged really well though, it's that rockin' 8-bit soundtrack. I beat this game about a month ago, and I've still got songs from the game stuck in my head, and honestly, I don't even mind. It's got really awesome sounding songs that help enhance the mood of the game, like really mystical sounding music when you meet the four wise sages, and really ramped up and exciting music when it's time to get to business. Crystalis didn't sell a ton of copies initially, but since its release, it's garnered a bit of a fan base or at least enough of one to warrant a remake of the game to be released on the Game Boy Color ten years later. Unfortunately, this remake did a lot of things wrong, and is widely considered vastly inferior. You can get a loose copy of Crystalis for about $12, or you can get a complete boxed copy for about 30 I got my copy, here, just a little while ago for about 12 so if you keep your eyes open, you're sure to come across some really good deals. Crystalis is a really interesting game that represents some of the roots of the action RPG genre. And as such, it's really fun and interesting to go back and play through it and see some of the, some of the mechanics of the game that really became like staples of the genre. And others which, while not smash hits in this game, were later improved upon in other series. It's for that reason that this game is just a really neat piece of heritage for fans of the action RPG genre, and that's why it's got a spot in the game collection. What? You're still around? Well, if you like what you see, there's more where that came from. Here's a couple of my favorites. Also, since you seem to be checking out my other videos and all, maybe you should consider clicking on this button. It's good for you. Come on.